Hi everyone, um, here's the second film of a series of three um, that we're producing as part of a partnership between the National Pharmacy Association and Legs Matter. Um, in this second one, we're going to look at the campaign um, and then how that fits in um, with what we discussed in the first one. Um, Alison, please could you tell me or tell the audience a little bit more about the Legs Matter campaign, what it is and how did that all come about? Oh, thank you. Matt. It's a great opportunity to share this fabulous online um, uh, campaign and this amazing website that we have providing lots of information for uh, pharmacists and their um, the customers that they see. So um, I thought it'd be most useful if I just share my screen, uh, Matt, because I will just take you through the Legs Matter um, uh, overview. And Hayley, do butt in uh, whenever you fancy adding to that um, PowerPoint. That's it. So uh, hopefully you can see that. And then I'll switch it off when uh, we finish. So um, the Legs Matter is a, is a coalition of societies, actually. And we got together back in sort of really 2016-17 when we realized that leg problems uh, were not being solved by us, frankly, as clinicians, we had not improved the lot of patients a lot of the time. And there was no sort of awareness really amongst the public that legs needed a little bit more attention than say an arm wound does. So we got together and um, under the auspices and uh, direction of the Society of Tissue Viability, we formed this coalition. And so here you have here our ambition, which was to work together to increase awareness, understanding and the action on lower leg and foot wounds amongst the public and healthcare professionals. So we've been going for a few years now and we've had um, campaigns every year. And so our Legs Matter campaign this year is between the 10th and the 14th of June. But we try and have events all through the year. So um, if anyone goes on to our Legs Matter website, you will see lots of events happening and also past events. So there's lots of information there. And basically, um, each of the societies involved, each of the societies are involved in Legs Matter simply because this does the task that we would want to do anyway. And collaboration together, speaking together, understanding the different aspects um, that we bring to the coalition is really important. So we've done lots of campaigns. This is one, one of our first actually about Stand Up For Legs. And so um, do encourage people to look at our website because it's just very bright and cheerful and uh, very visually pleasing, hopefully. And so we've got a good website, a good number of views, and we have um, quite a good number of people that linger on our pages, reading them, which is great. And um, when you go on, look at the resources available. And what's really exciting for us this year is we all the pages say on venous leg ulcers, hemosiderin staining, cellulitis. We've got these downloadable resources. So the pages are... Um, fixed in such a way that you can just download and print off easily without it, it ruining your printer with color and so on. Um, and so there's a lot of resources. And as a coalition, we have patients on the um, board as well. So this is a very collaborative approach to this subject. We have focusing on harm. Now that may sound a little um, dramatic, but the thing is when people have wounds that are non-healing that Hayley described in the previous film, um, it's unnecessary and it's unwarranted and, and it's something that's avoidable. So we describe some leg ulcers as avoidable harm as we would now with pressure ulcers if people are aware of, of the change in wording around pressure ulcers. There are avoidable leg ulcers as well as avoidable pressure ulcers. So we put the campaign in a context of what do we do? What does harm look like and how do we avoid it? How do we reduce it? So um, you'll see a lot of um, uh, details, visuals about that. And if you really want to know a lot more about um, why we're describing it as harmful, do look at our Making uh, Legs Matter 
position document on this and it has a lot of information there, lots of data and so on. So we have a lot of really nice merchandise and uh, you've got action packs and so on. And again, this is focused around what do people need to know about their legs? And so some of the most um, um, uh, popular um, uh, leaflets are things like this one, which is a three point leg check. These are great. And then if we want to know more, and especially for system change, we've got um, a leaflet oopsie, um, saying about um, the 10 points that we're trying to uh, promote uh, as an organization. So there's lots of information there. And um, and please for, follow us on Twitter because we have our leg, our L. It's not really showing very well on this, but the, the L. And we take the L on tour. And I believe Hayley's going to be doing that this um, uh, week as well. So we link very, very much into the national strategies around this, the National Wound Care Strategy. We've got the European Wound Management Association, lovely videos on there as well. And I believe this um, presentation will be accessible on the NPA um, site um, as a PDF. So you can link into these this information as well. And there's a, just a lovely video on the European Wound Management uh, YouTube site. So we're doing a lot of collaboration this year uh, with yourselves, which we see as being a really, really important step in raising public awareness. Um, we've got with uh, GPNs, general practice nurses, we've got a webinar with the RCN forum, and we've got lots of um, activities in uh, the June week. And as I said, all year round, we, we're trying not to just have a big bash, we're trying to spread it through the year. And, and it really just to hone in on um, linking into the first film that we uh, ran with you, this is about the fact that we believe that people have leg wounds, leg dripping legs, uh, unhealed wounds, unmanaged lymphedema, and actually there is a solution and uh, it shouldn't be happening for a lot of people. It is about getting the right care at the right time but sometimes people are self-managing for quite a while because they don't know who to talk to about it. They, they maybe some are embarrassed about what's happening on their legs actually, and, and are reluctant to lift their trouser leg. And we've um, had that recently, uh, sort of a good description of that uh, for one of our patients recently. But we honestly believe that uh, a lot of what happens shouldn't be happening. So this is part of our work. Um, in wound care and in lower leg management. So these are the 10 asks and the one of the asks, number three, is giving immediate necessary care. And this is where the work, the collaboration with the National Pharmacy Association comes in because we're saying things can happen within uh, in the high street before things um, get too bad and before they deteriorate. And we do believe that the conversation is actually changing and that the profile of this condition um, or the unmanaged condition, the workload associated with this, the admissions uh, associated with this um, is becoming much more widely understood, which is absolutely great. And it's also about recognizing it's, it's, hard, it's about a mindset as well and, um, and letting the penny drop that some of this is unnecessary. So, um, I think what I'll do is stop uh, sharing the screen and then you can ask us any questions about uh, the Legs Matter Coalition. Perfect. Thank you, Alison. That was uh, really insightful and loads of great snippets in there. Um, Hayley, coming to you as the expert and from an information perspective, what um, kind of information do you provide? Is it mainly geared up for nurses because kind of the historical legacy there or is there content in the resources that we could apply to pharmacy? Yeah, so I think Alison um, and the presentation that was up, um, you can see some of what's on the website um, and it's a nice, easy read. It's not complicated. It's not too medical jargon. So the simple answer really is information to everybody. You can look on there as a health professional, whether that be a GP, a nurse, a podiatrist, 
um, it's patience and it's even for you know someone at home that thinks oh I've got this on my leg and they might want to look more into what that could be uh, you know if that's a varicose vein so hemocid or in staining so it's for everybody to read and it reads in a way that's understandable for everybody um, as in what's on there, the content, there's, again, Alison shared, uh, you know, the good slides of some of the downloadable leaflets that are now available on there, which is great, um, particularly for pharmacists. If someone's coming into the pharmacy and you're explaining something to them, it'd be great that there's now downloadable content that you can give them, because I know some patients say they don't take everything on when they're first told things, so it's something that they could go away with and read. Um, I think there's also some really good patient stories on there. I'm a, a true advocate that patient stories are the strongest stories that are most remembered um, because it, you know, it's it's them and you know you're seeing them at their most vulnerable when they're telling their story. Um, there's uh, pages on there about different skin conditions, so it's not just about lymphedema, it's not just about wounds, it's about different skin conditions, eczema. Um, it talks on there about cellulitis um, and there's other information and support on there. So there's also links that might take you um, to, to other areas. So if you've got a wound because of a particular health condition, there's also links on there that might take you to that as well. For example, if you've got sickle cell disease, diabetes, there's other websites. So it's not it's not just a, you know, a single a single read. It can take you to different websites to look up different things so it's it's brilliant perfect so a, a true wealth of information in the wound care space that i think <laughs> um, obviously would be very grateful to have because it doesn't really exist or it's not broadcast at least anyway and i think it's knowing that there's that resources there and you can go and get some good okay. clinical content that supports them with having those conversations and like you said around the the hearts and minds piece and seeing a patient's story that resonates and you can apply that then to your practice so I, I like that and I think they'll be really well received. Alison I know in the quick presentation you talked about campaigns uh, and national initiatives are in there as well um, is there kind of any other campaigns that farms can get behind that link to this or how do those national initiatives how do you see those fitting in with the pharmacy landscape? I think I think the most important thing for me is that the pharmacists recognise that legs are a problem, that a, a leg wound is different to an arm wound. You know, they you know, it's the same with if you had, say, um, pyodermic gangrenosum, a nasty inflammatory wound type. Right. Is that you can have that anywhere on the body and often um, they may be linked to a surgical wound. It pops up when you have the surgical wound. But where do you see real significant pyoderma gangrenosum wounds? On the leg. And so the impact of gravity is such a standard thing. We're, we're humans and we stand up <laughs> on two legs and we have problems and gravity affects our legs. And so because of that, if people walk into the pharmacy and you look at them and you think, well, they're not walking very well or they've got very swollen legs or they're, um, they've got slip on shoes that they're trying to keep into, <laughs> you know, gripping, gripping their toes tightly to try and keep their slip ons on. They've got a, a problem and um, and the legs need um sort of understanding that a general wound, a laceration becomes a problem if it's on the leg. And if, if people just understood that, that, that somebody um, needs different care, then if you know your local area as a pharmacist, you would know who to talk to. It's about um, advocating for your, the, the, the person in front of you and you're just going, you need to understand this is about your leg and um, it is on the leg and you may need additional help because of that and so a wound isn't just a wound it's about the site of the wound that's particularly problematic for leg wounds perfect thank you Alison. And, I and i think that's a really good point it's that pharmacy and there's a stat somewhere that pharmacy gets 1.2 million visits per day across the uk and so there's lots of people walking in and out of pharmacy it's kind of one of the probably most visited healthcare location in the country and those kind of people that are coming in with those symptoms 
we see them, see them every single day. Oh. And it's just kind of having that confidence perhaps to say something's not quite right there or are they being treated oh. for that lower leg wound? Is it being seen to? Or are they ignoring it? Is it getting worse and they're not doing anything about it? So yeah. That's, that's a really, good, really, really good point. Um, Hayley, and you kind of touched on this before, but I think we've talked about lower leg wounds, but kind of what other areas or other conditions kind of link to this that pharmacy should be looking out for? Or it's not just necessarily about a wound that might be exuding or whatever it may be it could be other conditions and how does that kind of link into the length matter work uh, so again if you if you think back to what's on the on the website there are like i said um as you mentioned there are other conditions on there so you have lipedema um there's information on lymphedema the rare diseases like what alison mentioned the pyoderma gangrenosum um, there's some good um, images on there um, cellulitis, you know, some people are not sure what or even know what cellulitis is. Um, so there's some really good resources on there that you can look at um, as well. Yeah, I, if I can add to that, I think the cellulitis is a really important one. You know, the story that goes with people with cellulitis, they have several episodes and even admissions before people realise it's to do with unmanaged edema. And so if you as pharmacists go, gosh, this is the third time you've been in for um, antibiotics for this condition, right, is um, there's information on the website around the need to manage that with edema, um, with uh, compression, and they need help. Um, having a class one off the counter um, uh, hosiery or sock is not the answer. They need referral. But often people, GPs included, don't know this, <laughs> that, that the um, cellulitis, the repeat infection, um, is, a, is a problem and can be managed successfully with someone that knows what they're doing um, regarding compression therapy. So you knowing that is about signposting them to the appropriate person. Um, but, you know, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are people this week who are on repeat antibiotics for this condition that could that need to have the correct therapy and it's poorly managed in the uk and worldwide to be honest yeah really really interesting i think it's recognizing those signs and symptoms isn't it and like you said even touched on cellulitis it's one that you probably probably may know a little bit more about but not necessarily how that may translate into the community and what those things to look out for and people are presenting that's uh, really interesting. The the Legs Matter Awareness Week is June this year. Um, and my kind of thought process is kind of a pharmacy. They do like health campaigns and they have kind of space in their pharmacy. How do we, how can pharmacy take action, do you think, and support the campaign, kind of get involved to make sure that them as an individual in the community pharmacy can play a part in this campaign? I think um, if, if there was a task, I suppose, it would be to for the pharmacists and the um, uh, the counter staff to be aware of, of of this. Everything starts with awareness. You know, there's no no point in um, having uh, any more tasks than that at this stage. It's like know about legs. Know that legs need something different, and that there's some resources available to help people understand more. And to, I think in the next um, film, we talk about what um, uh, people can do in a pharmacy on a daily basis, um, what questions could be asked of, of the customers coming in and so on. Um, and I, so I think raising awareness, having some um, leaflets would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and so I think there's much more to be done around that. It may be useful for us to collaborate over a pharmacy related um, information leaflet. Um, and so I'd be excited to do that. But at the moment, there are some great leaflets regarding top tips, three, three point leg check and so on that are available now. Perfect, thank you. And I think that's the, the takeaway message there is that there are there is some great content that's there. It's freely, it's readily available. Pharmacies can access it, they can download that content, upskill their teams. And even if it was, even if every pharmacy got involved and just spotted one patient, that would make a huge difference. Um, so I think that call to action there is to go away, have a think, 
download that information, read read on it, upskill, educate the teams, um, and then hopefully we can improve um, legs for the better. So thank you both, Alison and Hayley, for, for that one. Um, and thank you all for joining us for our second film of the series. And uh, we shall see you on the third. Thanks, guys. Thank you.